400 different species. And if you know where to look, you may be lucky enough to see some of the most spectacular species in the world. And here's a secret. If you want to catch a glimpse of some of the area's wildlife, you might want to start by looking up. The most famous flyers in the Grand Canyon happen to be the rarest. They're the largest bird species in North America. Making their way back from the brink of extinction. California condors. In 1982, there were only 22 wild condors left in the entire world. By 1985, Efforts were made to capture these amazing creatures. And by 1987, the last were put into captivity. The Peregrine Fund, located in Boise, Idaho, helped pioneer methods of captive breeding for the California condor and other species. the Peregrine Fund began reintroducing this giant bird back into the wild. And here's something you may not know. The wide expanse of the northern Arizona landscape proved to be one of the most hospitable environments for the birds. When the reintroduction program came about, they're reintroducing them in California and also here because we have fewer power lines and fewer of the problems that brought condors near to extinction in the first place. They tend to spend a lot of time here on the South Pyramid Grand Canyon National Park. Today, over two dozen California condors live in the Grand Canyon. And these birds were the first to fly outside the state of California in 70 years. And wildlife biologists keep very close tabs on each one. But here's a secret. To help the birds survive, they have had to devise other methods of tracking and caring for the condors in order to limit the breed's human interaction. Right now we have um, satellite telemetry on these birds. Each one has one of these systems under their wing. And when the birds are flying over the south rim, it's really easy to see it. They'll have a big um, white number on their wing, and then you'll see a little tiny transmitter with an uh, antenna coming out of it. And that's what the folks with the, the receivers and the antennas that are walking along the wind picking up the radio signals of each bird. We can track them where they're feeding, where they're flying, where they're roosting at night. They're very attracted to all the commotion of human um, human activity here. They're very curious birds. Um, so they like to check us out. And here's a secret. The reason these birds are attracted to commotion is because that usually signals food for them. But that curiosity sometimes gets the condors in trouble. So biologists from the Peregrine Field Station in Arizona try to find them in a hurry using the sophisticated tracking system. Despite the best modern equipment, this ancient species struggle to survive in a modern world isn't over yet. Condors like to land on cliffs or anything really high. And thanks to adjustments in the Grand Canyon that had been done for other birds, the condors are safe there as well. Our local power company has actually been very proactive about um, condor proofing, raptor proofing our power lines so that we don't have collisions with power lines. That's a huge obstacle for those birds. You see a triangle so they can't land right on or next to the transformers. And it was really quite a challenge. And then along the power line stretch, you'll, just, you'll see flappers and that alerts the birds that there's a line there so they don't have collisions. try and ensure the condor's safety, they can't be certain the birds will breed in the wild. So here's a secret. To help the species save itself, the Peregrine Fund helped pioneer a captive breeding program. In Boise, they encouraged 19 pairs of birds to lay eggs and raise their own chicks. But when the mature condors can't, scientists sometimes help at arm's length. And if you're wondering what all this painstaking care has done for the California condor, 
There are now over 180 of these amazing creatures. Most people, when they actually see them up close for the first time, the first thing they said is, oh my God, what an ugly bird. And then they see them take off, and you see this 10-foot wingspan, and you see them soaring over the canyon. And it's incredible to watch something that looks like it just came out of the Pleistocene era. And it's here, and it's thriving in the park, and, and that's a pretty special experience. It gives you goosebumps on your eyes. But the California condor is not the only creature to thrive in the canyon. 